controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat Al-Qaeda. All you got to do is start looking around, start thinking for yourself, start investigating things, and you will see it all right there. So you have the power. Humanity has the power. We have the power. Do you want to fight? You better believe you got one. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. As for me, give me liberty or give me death! The answer to 1984 is 1776. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Friday, March 8th, 2013. Here's a quick look at what's coming up. Tonight, what does Attorney General Holder really mean by no? Does he think he has a license to kill? Meanwhile, government looks for new inventive ways to block the sale of ammunition. And Feinstein wants to grab the guns from Mr. and Mrs. Veteran. These stories and more coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, although it has been heralded as a clear signal that the Obama administration has been forced to acknowledge that it cannot drone strike Americans on U.S. soil, Eric Holder's response to Rand Paul seems to reaffirm the government's existing position. Responding to Rand Paul's 13-hour filibuster, Attorney General Eric Holder sent a letter to Paul's office which stated, It has come to my attention that you have now asked an additional question. Does the president have the authority to use a weaponized drone to kill an American not engaged in combat on American soil? The answer to that question is no. And that's the key right there. Notice the phrase, engaged in combat. I mean, what does the administration consider to be an act of combat? I mean, you got to ask. I mean, after all, we do know that the Department of Homeland Security, for example, well, uh, they consider liberty lovers to be uh, potential terrorists. The DHS study entitled Hot Spots of Terrorism and Other Crimes in the United States identifies potential terrorists as well, Americans who believe their way of life is under attack, or people who consider themselves to be anti-global. It also says Americans who are suspicious of centralized federal authority are potential terrorists. I'm not making this up, folks. It's in their own documents. Americans who are reverent of individual liberty, well, they may be terrorists, and people who believe in conspiracy theories, of course they might be terrorists, they might be a threat to national security. So forgive me if I don't trust the government's uh, definition of engaged in combat. And furthermore, as the Washington Post reported yesterday, the Obama administration is now preparing to extend the legal basis for its drone strikes to target people who have no direct connection to actual terrorists. The White House, the State Department, the Pentagon, and intelligence agencies are now considering to expand the law to include associates of associates of terrorists. So that's the true meaning behind Eric Holder's response to Rand Paul. Whoever the government accuses to be uh, a terrorist could very well be uh, become a target for a drone strike. You could read more details in an article posted right now on Infowars.com by Paul Joseph Watson. Well, it looks like another anti-gun bill has been introduced, this time by the clueless state senator Audrey Gibson from Florida, who, get this, she has proposed a bill that would require mandatory anger management classes for anyone who wishes to purchase ammunition. 1678 is twofold. It would require a three-day waiting period for the sale of any firearm. But what's stirring the most controversy is a requirement that would make it a crime to buy ammunition 
unless you presented a certificate showing that you completed a minimum two-hour anger management program, either online or face-to-face, -face, and you'd be required to renew the certification every 10 years. So there you have it. The ignorance continues, and I don't know about you, but I feel like I might need anger management after watching that news clip and reading this bill. And I tell you what, Senator Audrey Gibson, I'll take anger management if you take stupid management. How does that sound? Or better yet, why don't you take a course on constitutional, uh, constitution awareness? There's a good idea because, uh, you know, after all, you did swear an oath to the Constitution, apparently something you have no idea what that's all about. Now, I had to laugh when I was reading through this article where she said that she is surprised by all the negative attention that this bill is getting. She said the bill was intended to reduce anger, not cause anger. And uh, I understand her office is getting a ton of phone calls right now, not only from people in Florida, but from all across the country as well. People are probably going to the Florida State Senate website, looking up her contact information, like her email address right there. And maybe they're calling her office and, uh, you know, expressing their concerns, maybe even expressing their anger. And hey, if you decide to call her office, maybe you could suggest that... Uh, she creates a bill that would require Barack Obama to take anger management classes before he launches drone strikes. Now, there's an idea. I like that one. Hey, we've got an interesting video lined up for you right now. Now, this is from the guys at Project Veritas, and uh, they took some cameras into various police stations, uh, one of them in, in New York, for example, where it is uh, illegal to have a firearm. You can't have a gun. And they asked law enforcement what we're supposed to do to protect ourselves in the event of an armed break-in. Let's take a look. If somebody breaks into my home in, in this town of Rocksville, okay, will the police department be there to protect me from that? Yeah. But what happens between the time I call 911 and you get there? It takes a couple minutes to get there. Okay. In the two minutes, though, yeah. what do I do? That's a good question. Okay, but basically it's just in that two minutes I'm on my own. Yeah. And you can watch the video in its entirety at Infowars.com. There was a couple clips in there that we didn't get a chance to show you. Uh, one of the cops told the guys that in case of an armed break-in, to uh, lock yourself in a room and start yelling and screaming. And uh, another cop said, you don't need a firearm. Get a dog. All you need is a dog. And I agree, uh, you know, dogs are, are pretty good. Uh, you know, Bandit here, he, he makes for uh, one hell of a good watchdog. But I'd be worried in the event of an armed break-in that they would shoot Bandit and then shoot me. So uh, besides that, I don't think that's what the Founding Fathers had in mind when they wrote the Second Amendment. And uh, no offense, Bandit, but in the case of a uh, tyrannical government overthrow, uh, I don't think uh, you're my first choice. But anyway, there you have it. And hey, I don't know if you heard about this, but the city of Los Angeles is targeting Alex Jones, targeting InfoWars for uh, what they call illegally posted signs. Apparently there's some folks out there, some truthers who are out there posting stickers and, uh, you know, but they're saying things like victory and you are not alone and united we stand. And as much as I agree with the message, they are not our stickers and nor are we responsible for anyone who decides to post a bumper sticker uh, somewhere where they shouldn't. And uh, for more on this, we go to Millie Weaver reporting from Los Angeles. I'm Millie Weaver, and I'm here in downtown Los Angeles at the City Hall investigating why Infowars.com and Alex Jones received a public notice from the City of Los Angeles regarding illegal signs being posted on public property. Here you can see on the invoice that the title of the removed signs was Victory, You Are Not Alone, United We Stand. It also shows that there was a first violation and a second violation. As you can see, there's nothing on this that would indicate that InfoWars is responsible for the posting of this sign. Yet there was nothing attached to this document showing their evidence to back up this claim. 
Alex Jones responded to their claims by stating that they are not responsible for the postings of the illegal signs on public property and that they are not responsible for somebody else's actions. I first spoke with the mayor's secretary and then Peter Sanders with public relations who later wrote, the mayor is not available at this time, and our office has no comment on the sticker issue. Is this gross negligence or harassment? I decided to take to the streets of Los Angeles and find out what the people of L.A. have to say. As long as it's not covering up, like, other signage, um, I don't really see an issue with that. America is a... Uh... After all, a free country. No, I mean, it's it's not really a negative thing. Yeah. You think it should be the person who posted the sticker that gets fined? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a freedom of speech. So I'm assuming they're not finding politicians who are doing the same thing. It's because they're all, you know, leading off the same plate. They're all liar, liars. You know, no one should be held responsible except for the people that are putting it up. I'm going to further investigate the false nature of the city of Los Angeles claim and get to the bottom of why Alex Jones and InfoWars are really being fined. For InfoWars, I'm Millie Weaver. Well, thanks, Millie. That was a good report. And Alex Jones has pointed out that you could simply do a Google search for Obama street art in L.A. And, uh, you know, you could find hundreds of murals, signs, and other street art uh, depicting Obama in a favorable light. So, uh, you know, under the city of Los Angeles' delusional legal theories, Barack Obama must immediately pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for each infraction. Hey, that's going to do it for the first half of our show. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Up next, Dan Bedondi and Val Venus wrestle with the truth about WWE and Jack Swagger. I'm David Ortiz with an InfoWars News Bulletin. Well, it seems that Senator Dianne Frankenstein's assault weapons bill will not pass. Let's continue to cross our fingers. However, two other anti-gun bills are likely to pass. One of them would require universal background checks for individuals that wanted to purchase a gun. And another bill would prevent straw purchases from taking place. Many senators, however, are debating whether an exemption should be made for fathers who want to give their guns to their children or vice versa. Senator Dianne Frankenstein says she wouldn't mind such a provision. However, another bill would have to be created because in her estimation, it's important to note that some family members who are veterans suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, and so therefore, they shouldn't be allowed to hand their guns to other people. It's important to note that whenever the government gets to decide who gets what, many Americans' civil liberties are violated. Senator Ted Kennedy was a great example of that. He was put on the no-fly list on several occasions, and we know that he wasn't a terrorist. And recently, Infowars.com posted an article on a former military veteran by the name of Jeffrey Schrader, whose guns were recently taken away from him because they found out that when he was 19 years old, he got into a fist fight, and that fist fight was put on his criminal record. I've been buying guns, selling old guns, getting another gun for 40-something years. But in 2008, Schrader found out he was flagged during a background check. He was now on the federal firearms ban list. They contacted me and told me, uh-uh. The ATF officer was apologetic about it. He says, I couldn't believe this. I looked into everything trying to figure this out because it didn't make any sense. He said, man, I'm sorry I have to tell you this, but you can't have any guns. It's important to note that less than 1% of Americans will be the victims of gun violence. And of that 1%, at least 60% are victims because of suicides, which we obviously cannot prevent, the drug war, which we do not support here at InfoWars, and liberal gun control laws. We know that in Chicago, they have strict gun control laws and gun violence is through the roof. There are also strict gun control laws in Washington, D.C. and Detroit, and they have high homicide rates in those cities as well. I leave you with this footage of Senator Dianne Frankenstein, who says she supports strict concealed carry laws in California. And remember, if you want to continue to support our operation, become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. 
I know the sense of helplessness that people feel. I know the urge to arm yourself because that's what I did. I was trained in firearms. I'd walk to the hospital when my husband was sick. I carried a concealed weapon. I made the determination that if somebody was going to try to take me out, I was going to take them with me. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle, and the RAD Eliminator Pro Filtered Sports Bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go bag favorite, the Life Straw, the Crystal Quest Shower Filter System, and the Aquapod Kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. In a story breaking out of North Carolina, the ACLU has asked 62 law enforcement agencies across the state for information about how the police are being militarized. The ACLU wants police and sheriff's departments to explain how they use military equipment and tactics in their civilian law enforcement cases. They believe the public has a right to know, and so do we. InfoWars has been pressing this point in public for years, and we're glad the ACLU is now investigating. The ACLU is asking the police what kind of records they keep when they use military equipment and tactics, and if the tactics are being used more often in minority communities. In Winston-Salem alone, in recent years, there have been three instances of armored vehicle use and standoffs, one man killed by a police sniper, and the police department uses a drone in the war of drug prohibition. What would Andy say about this dangerous bunch of Barneys? The WWE World Wrestling Entertainment has jumped on the bandwagon demonizing Tea Party Americans as racist. They created a new villain, Jack Swagger, who is a loudmouth constitutionalist and racist who receives fan mail from Alex Jones. Yeah, right. InfoWars reporter and former uh, wrestler Bionic Dan Badandi, well, he got a chance to sit down and talk with another former wrestler, Val Venus, about this latest propaganda campaign that portrays Americans who oppose big government as domestic extremists and even terrorists. Here's Dan Badandi. Hi, this is Dan Badandi reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News. In recent news, the WWE created a brand new heel gimmick. Jack Swagger and his manager, Zeb Coulter, who preached the Bill of Rights, spot the Gaddison flag, and talked about the illegal immigration problem going on in this country. And their opponent happens to be a Mexican wrestler who they're facing for the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania, Alberta Del Rio. Two weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, during Swagger's match, commentators Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler joked about how Swagger receives bags of fan mail from Glenn Beck, Rush Limbaugh, and Alex Jones, and then again highlighted Alex Jones. Could this be a demonization of the Liberty Movement. 
And today we're going to get our guest's take on this. He's a former WWE superstar, Val Venus. And Mr. Val Venus, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well. Yourself? Oh, not bad. And I uh, yeah, just want to get your take on this um, this whole thing going on with uh, demonizing the liberty movement and all that. Um, you know, as you've seen in uh, the WWE, uh, what's your take on that? You know, it's it's one of those things that's kind of it's, it's irritating to say the least. I mean, you got so many hardworking people in the liberty movement right now at the grassroots. They're putting their time and their effort into really developing a meaningful movement, and, and it's a it's an important movement. It's a very important movement, especially for America. And to see that there's a constant demonization over and over and over again, and you know, it, it's not that the uh, I mean, I, I love the storyline, you know, the, the, the racist, uh, you know, is going to take on the, the, the uh, Mexican at WrestleMania. So I like that storyline. It's controversial. But when they start flying things like the Gadsden flag, for example, in the background, and com I mean, uh, a swastika would have been a lot more appropriate <laughs> in that storyline. But to actually take something that's been adopted by the Liberty Movement, um, by certain segments of the Tea Party, uh, that... I mean, that flag is meant to be flown in the face of oppressive government. It's not meant to be flown at the border telling Mexicans, uh, hey, uh, don't don't tread on me. That's not what it was for. It was to tell government, don't tread on me. So to see that flag being used in the manner it's, uh, it's being used by WWE is disappointing, to say the least. During uh, Jack Swagger's match on Monday Night Raw two weeks ago, um, commentators Michael Cole and uh, Jerry Lawler, they uh, said uh, he gets tons of fan mail from Glenn Beck, uh, Rush Limbaugh. Then they mentioned Alex Jones' name twice. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, are they? Is there something like they're trying to attack right-wing uh, conservatives, uh, radio talk shows? Guerrilla marketing. Hey, let's see if we can do this on national TV. Mention Glenn Beck. Mention uh, Rush Limbaugh. Mention, mention Alex Jones to see if one of them bite. You know, and then, of course they, they can create a big, uh, you know, storm over it, which is great guerrilla yeah. marketing. But again, it goes back to, okay, now we're going and pushing for profits over the, the, what the real, serious, very real concerns here in America today. We're printing money out of thin air. That's got to stop. And it's going to stop one way or another. Absolutely. I mean, we're going to have, we're going to have like super hyperinflation. I mean, the majority of Americans, you watch me get up, they, they put on their pants, they put on their shirt, they brush their teeth, they eat breakfast, they go to work on the weekends and play baseball and they have no idea what's coming down the pipe. The reality is we're printing money faster than ever and, and very, very serious issues, CISPA, NDAA, I mean very serious issues that the Liberty Movement and the people in the Liberty Movement are working very, very hard to try and fight against. And then you have a media company that would rather use that movement for profits. And it's a very serious movement. When WWE says that they support CISPA, I mean, yeah. okay, let's just face the facts. I got a seven-year-old little girl and a three-year-old little girl. I'm not going to be able to control and, and, and dictate what they can and cannot download on the computer every single second of the day. If they download a cartoon from Disney, there is a chance in that CISPA bill that feds can come crashing through the door, not only take her computer, but take her away and throw her in prison. I mean, let's face the facts. We're going down that slippery slope, and WWE supports that kind of tyrannical bills, and that's disappointing to, to see that coming from a company that I absolutely used to love working for. Well, absolutely, and, um, you know, it's it's crazy what's going on, and, um, you know, they're arresting kids for bringing bubble guns to school, bringing toy guns to school, and even making a hand gesture of a gun. They're taking kids out of class, arresting them, expelling them, suspending them. I mean, it's just going, you know, it's just going crazy, and then you have the UN and the government Hell bent on taking our internet freedoms away, and you know, with CISPA and all these other bills, they had ACTA recently, and um, you know, it's just like people stand up against you know internet bill, but when it comes to guns, which is my next question, uh, your thoughts on gun control? Oh, I'm 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 completely against any form of gun regulation whatsoever. I mean, we can sit there and make up a bill and say criminals are not allowed to have guns. Period. The bottom line is they're going to have guns. They do not follow the rules. They do not follow the laws, and that's why they're criminals. Only people that those gun control laws are going to affect are law-abiding citizens. Criminals don't care about gun laws. They don't follow the laws. Why would they? Why would they care about a gun law? You know, if they're law-abiding citizens, they would follow that law and they'd give up their guns. He's in the entire nation. It's insanity. And you'll get a lot of these talking heads out there, though. He's, you know, giving out these stats and, and, and those stats. I mean, we're talking about real life views here. We're talking about Chicago, Baltimore, D.C. I mean, it's real life. Compare that with Kansas, Georgia. That's real 
Oh, it's not studies. That's real life. Absolutely. And all the statistics show that, you know, states that have less gun control have no, little to no crime. And, you know, you have Chicago and New York who pride themselves on gun control, but have the worst murder rates and crime with guns. And you know, look at Switzerland. You know, they, everybody has a gun in Switzerland, but yet they have almost no crime. You know, it's just, it's just unreal that they take a disaster like Sandy Hook turn it all around to say anybody who has a gun is bad, you know, and they think, you know, your citizen turning your firearms is going to make the criminals turn their firearms, and that's not going to happen. But um, we're almost out of time, and uh, your final comments? Yeah, you know, that Sandy Hook, it, to me, it's, it wasn't a matter of, uh, oh, there's too many guns in Sandy Hook. There wasn't enough guns in Sandy Hook. There wasn't one responsible adult, not one single responsible adult in Sandy Hook that had a firearm, a personal firearm. How many lives could have been saved? How many lives could have been saved if just one responsible adult had to have exercised their rights in the Second Amendment, in the Constitution, and, and just carried a firearm with them everywhere they went? I mean, it's much better. The old saying goes, it's much better to have a gun and never need it than to desperately need a gun and not have it. Now it's from a WWE superstar, Val Venus. And as you can see, folks, the liberty movement is under attack. It's very vital and very important that we all must take part of this liberty movement. And this is a damn bit down to important for the InfoWars Nightly News. All right, well, thank you, Dan Bedondi. Thank you, crew. That's going to do it for tonight's show. The InfoWars Nightly News will continue, Lord willing, next Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time, Texas time, that is. Until then, have a great weekend. Come back and join us again right here on Monday. Good night.